Hey, what's up guys? So I have this GPU right here. This is the GT1030. Now the 1030 is obviously the cheapest GPU in the entire Pascal lineup as of today. It's priced at 359 ringgit. And of course, the one I have right here is from Zotac. And you have different variants out there, which is from Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, etc. And of course, the 1030 is supposed to supersede the 750 Ti. Now the 1030 caters to two main people in my opinion. Those who actually want to sort of fill up your little PCIe slots if you really have a, have one on your motherboard that is actually not filled up or your little integrated GPU isn't actually enough for a HTPC or for those of you who are actually gaming um, on this eSports titles like I would say Counter-Strike, Go, Overwatch, etc. on really, really low settings or obviously for those of you who have slightly a lower budget. So let's have a look at the GPU and see how it fares. So the Zotac variant of the GT1030, it's absolutely tiny, but I guess in the end, the 2GB of DDR5 RAM and a 30W TDP pretty much justifies the size of the card itself. Now the card does also kick out 1468MHz of boost clock, which is in my opinion, pretty okay. Dimensions wise, the card only measures nothing more than a single slot GPU at 172 mils in length, which is surprisingly not any bigger than my favourite pancake mix. Now you may mistaken it as a network card as well though, Obviously, for 359 ringgit, you're not getting a backblade for the card as well, which is, I would say it would be nice if it did, and it does come with a little tiny fan that tries to push off some negligible heat off the VRAM and heatsink. Now, the 1030 obviously is a response to the AMD RX 550, which is about 60 ringgit more or less more expensive and a little bit more power hungry. Now, I'm still waiting for the RX 550 to do a comparison, but as of today, let's take a look at the GT 1030 first. So, with expectations sort of managed, I ran some benchmarks on the basic games on 1080p. First up is the people's choice of hip-firing, guns blazing CSGO. Now all settings were on medium which came up pretty alright and what I mean by alright is about 110 frames per second on average which is quite expected from CSGO given the fact that the game doesn't actually utilize that much resources to begin with. Secondly Overwatch is another popular one and slightly I would say more GPU intensive. Now with all settings turned down a little and given the fact that the animations are a little bit more crazy in my opinion, the 1030 performed decently well at about 79 on average. So what I actually did after benchmarking the main titles, I try to sort of push the GPU a little bit more on, I would say, AAA titles like Battlefield, uh, GTA 5, and even Doom. So let's have a look at the benchmarks, man, and see how far this little guy can take us. Now, given the fact there is only about 2GB of VRAM, which gave the GTA 5 a lot of shit in my opinion, running the game on a slightly lower setting is a must. And if you're up for anything above 80 frames per second or 90 frames per second, you're pretty much out of luck. Now, GTA 5 kicked out about 72 frames per second, which is pretty alright if you're gaming on a 60Hz monitor. Then you have the Battlefield 1, which is somehow quite popular as well in the eSports scene, but also very demanding in terms of graphics. Now, once again, I had to sort of tune down the graphics a little, and things weren't as bad as expected. Well, bad is quite subjective though, but Battlefield 1 scored about 52 frames per second on average. Finally, I tried running Doom, and I know for a fact that some actually say that AMD cards sort of perform better on Doom, and given the fact that the map itself does require a significant amount of rendering, the 1030 was sort of begging me to stop. After turning down the graphics a little bit more than usual, the game was quite playable, or maybe not because on average, the Doom only scored about 48 frames per second. For the record, if you're wondering, GPUs that don't actually require additional power supply tend to hit their thermal thresholds at about 65 degrees. Alright, so the bigger question is, is the 1030 a good GPU? Definitely, for 359 ringgit, you're pretty much getting, I would say, all your money's worth. But of course, the master race tribe or enthusiasts, or I would say the whole PC enthusiast scene would definitely recommend going for at least the 1060 3GB version onwards, simply because of its uh, VRAM efficiency, etc. And its, and its ability to run games at higher settings. But see, those who buy the 1030 either suffer the integrated graphic solution or just don't have the budget to splurge on a bigger and better GPU. So I would say for a fact that the 1030 does its job and after all, what you're paying for it, you're actually getting quite a fair bit. If you're gaming more than 1080 at 60 frames per second, then the 1030 may actually not be something quite suitable for you. Now, if you have not checked out my comparison video between the 1050, 1050 Ti and the 1060 Mini, be sure to check them out via the link in the description section below. Alright guys, that's all I have for this little video. Now, a big shout out to Zotac Malaysia for sending this GPU over. Thanks so much guys. And of course, eTech PC and Dotatech PC. It's priced at 359 bucks, guys. So go and get it if you want to. Links to purchase in the description section as well. Um, it's easy peasy, just one click away. These guys sort of give you the best price in town, competitive prices as well. And of course, if you have any other suggestions, criticisms, or if you dislike this video for some reason, if you dislike this video, you gotta let me know why in the comment section as well. Hit the subscribe button if you have not, and give me a big thumbs up if you like this video. And I'm gonna just pack this little 1030 away. I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.